So, 玉米烙 Chuzhou style corn pancake. So, 烙 in 玉米烙 it's a tradition of making pancake using root vegetable starch in Chaoshan region. When we first started the channel, we、uh, made the classic hao lao oyster pancake, which uses batter and probably the most well known of its kind. But that lao tradition doesn't stop there. Besides oyster, there's also corn pancake yu mi lao, which is my personal favorite. And there's also taro, sweet potato, pumpkin, seafood, cucumber, gourds, and so on. Basically, anything you want, you can turn it into a lao. So this time, we want to show you how to turn vegetables into this kind of pancake using corn and luva gourd, and also showing you both the dry coating and the batter method. So corn went up first. Here we have one ear of corn. Put it in a white bowl like this. Cut and collect the kernels into the bowl. Give it a couple runs to get rid of that unwanted corn soak, and then we can blanch. To a pot of boiling water, toss in the corn kernels. Let it cook for two minutes until it's done. Then strain, rinse it under running water to let it cool down, and then strain it and let it dry a little bit for about five minutes, and then after that time we can season. So mix in one tablespoon of sugar for sweetness, then optionally one tablespoon of instant cursor powder. Using cursor powder is a restaurant approach.、Uh, it adds some kind of fragrance to the final result, but you can totally skip it if you don't have. After mixing in the seasoning, we will be adding in the starch using the dry coating technique. So sweet potato starch is the most traditional choice for this style of pancake. But nowadays, restaurants will also use tapioca starch or potato starch as they are equally chewy and forms the pancake really well. But on that note, corn starch actually wouldn't work because it's less sticky, and the pancake itself will actually break if you use corn starch. And today we will be using tapioca starch. Now, adding in one tablespoon first, give it a good mix till there's no dry starch. Then add in another tablespoon. Repeat the process till all the kernels are basically coated like this. About nine to ten tablespoons, or about sixty grams in total, depending on how wet your corn kernels are. After we coat the corn kernels, we can move on to frying. But before we started the frying process, let's talk about setups. It will be best if you can work with two stove tops, and you can heat up the oil as you are forming the pancake in the pan. But if you are working with a single stove top like us in the video, you will need a white metal bowl or pot as we'll be heating up the oil till very hot first and save it for later. So right, frying to a nonstick pan, heat up two cups of oil to two hundred degrees Celsius, then heat off. Carefully pour into your metal bowl or pot. Leave it on the side as we'll need to use it right afterward. Next, keep the heat off. Evenly arrange the corn into a round disc. Give it some gentle press as you do it, and gently push in the sides to help the edge form. After forming the pancake, turn the heat on medium high. Sprinkle a little bit of water onto it to help the starch bond together, but be careful. Do not drop any water into that very hot bowl of oil right next to the pot. And then carefully ladle the hot oil back in along the sides of the pan so that we don't break the shape before it firms up. Now turn the heat to high. Let it fry for about four minutes till it floats and the edges starts to brown ever so slightly. Then carefully take it out and strain for a minute or two. After that, gently lay the pancake on the chopping board. Cut it into A pieces. Arrange it on a plate as you like. Then your yu mi lao is done. With a perfect crispy and chewy combo, and that little pops of sweetness from the corn, this is a must order at Chaoshan restaurants. Next up, let's make a savory one: luva gourd pancake. So luva gourd is a classic choice for this kind of pancake, but you can totally just use zucchini if you cannot find luva. 
Here we have one big gourd, about 350 gram. First, peel off the skin and cut it into four sections. Then into one centimeter thick pieces and then into one centimeter thick sticks. Then set aside. Next, for some crunch. Here's about 15 grams of peanut, roasted and peeled. Give it a rough chop and set aside. Now we can mix everything together. Just toss the peanuts in with the gourd slivers, add in a quarter teaspoon sugar, one teaspoon fish sauce, one whisked egg, and give it a quick mix. Next, immediately add in the starch, about 60 gram. So some people will add water in this stage to make a, a thinner batter, but because gourds will release a lot of moisture as soon as you add the seasonings in, so we actually prefer to just use an egg and form a thicker batter and let the moisture of the gourd to take care of the rest. So quickly mix the starch and the egg and now we can fry. Again, to a non-stick pan, heat on medium-high, Add in 1 tablespoon oil, give it a swirl, then pour in the batter. With a pair of chopsticks, spread it out evenly into a relatively round shape and stick the loose ends back. And let it fry till the center part sets, about 3 minutes, then shut off the heat. Place a big enough plate on the pan, flip, then carefully slide the pancake back into the pan. Turn the heat back on medium high and let it cook for another 3 minutes and done. Take it out, cut it into 8 pieces and serve. Chewy but with crunchy peanuts inside and the fish sauce provides a nice depth of umami. This pancake just really gives off that cozy, rustic home cooking vibe. So right, we show two methods in this video on how to make this kind of pancake, both the dry coating and the batter method. Both are legit ways to make the Chaosan style pancake. It just depends on the ingredient when deciding which one to use. Generally speaking, if you are working with stuff like corn or pumpkin that doesn't release too much moisture when cooking, you can go for the dry coating method and create a crispy end result. But if you are working with stuff like gourds or cucumber or seafood that contains a lot of moisture in them, then it will be best to use the batter method and create a nice and chewy texture. So yeah, recipes in the description box. A big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon. And of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.